This video will serve two purposes. Firstly, it will tell you if the Citroen Relay, the Peugeot Boxer or the Fiat Ducato is the right van for your motorhome conversion. Secondly, if you follow in my motorhome conversion, then this is my base van and today you'll see exactly what I've got to work with. I'm hoping to answer some of the questions you might have about this type of van that maybe nobody else is answering. What I've got to show you today is a Citroen Relay, but it is the same as the other two, two types of van. This one is a medium wheelbase, medium height vehicle. But if you're going for a bigger one, good luck. I can't, my drive's not big enough. So just quickly before I start, a little word about my knowledge as a van reviewer. I'm not some kind of expert and I don't work in the business. But I have owned a motorhome for nine years and through working for the bus company I work with these days, I drive a lot of different types of minibuses, so I'm quite used to different types of vehicles. So I do have a fair bit of knowledge about this type of vehicle as a driver that is. In terms of mechanics, I know nothing. Okay, let's start with the driving experience. So it's a two litre diesel, but it's not lacking in power in any way. It's a boy racers van or anything, but even though it's a shell at the moment, I imagine Tom have loaded up with all the stuff it needs to make it into a proper motorhome. It will still pull it along quite well. This 2017 model is pretty well equipped. It comes with DAB radio, cruise control, aircon, uh, Bluetooth connectivity, and it's Euro 6 rated for emissions. Worth bearing in mind if you spend a lot of time in low emission zones to look for a 2017 model onwards. The seats are comfortable and the driver's one is quite well adjustable too. Most interestingly, it comes with an armrest. It's quite a nice high ride position as well. I measured the base of the seat to 44 inches, which is 112 centimeters if you're not as old as me. That came in as a whole five inches higher than my old transit motorhome. Got a six speed gearbox, so quite fuel economical. Plenty of storage. And if you prefer good old fashioned maps to a modern sat nav, then this little gadget here, which I can't reach at the moment, will be right up your street. One thing I'm struggling to get used to is having the handbrake down on the right hand side. It shouldn't be a problem for me because most of the buses I drive have a handbrake on the right hand side. For some reason I just can't get used to using it that way around in this. In all honesty though, it's quite a useful feature. Bearing in mind I plan to have two swivel seats at the front. It'll be quite handy having nothing on the floor in between them. Spot the continuity error. Yeah, it's not the same bit of film. When I filmed all that, there was one thing I forgot to tell you which I thought was quite important, so let me tell you now. Basically, these side windows, they don't go very far back, as you can see, which makes it hard seeing if you're not absolutely straight coming out of a turning, so bear that in mind. It's worse, as you can imagine, on the passenger side. If, like me, you're taking the bulkhead out and you're going to put windows in right behind on both sides, it won't matter in the end because you'll be able to look back at the other windows but for the time being it does like make life more difficult. No van is complete without cup holders and this one's got some very good ones. Conveniently they're placed quite low down as well so there's no chance of the police seeing your beer. Just kidding. But they're a good size for a cost of coffee. Incidentally, if there are any trained baristas watching this, can you tell me something? Is it part of the training to learn how to ruin a good cup of tea? I seem to spend ages waiting while they fuss and fumble around over a cup of coffee. And then when it's my turn, they throw a tea bag in the cup, chuck some water on it and drown it in milk before it's even had a chance to brew. It's misleading. On the menu it says tea, in the cup it says pee. 
anyway that's enough ranting from me for now let me show you the business end of the van So the first thing I need to know is is it wide enough for me to put a bed across ways? So it's 6 foot 1, 73 inches or 186 centimetres. And it gets the same width up to about 90 centimetres. So you'd want the bed around about no higher than that I guess. Actually, there's um, a beam in here, uh, just over 80 centimetres, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to set the bed a bit further back by, if I want to take the panel out, setting the next panel in a little bit. If I do that both sides, I'm hoping that I'll get a full-size double bed in here, because and that's where 4 foot 6 comes to. I look at the extra, there's another six and a half inches angled space, which would mean that when the bed's there, you can still get your hand down to open the door, should you need to in an emergency. The height of space is limited. I'm about five foot nine, and there's not a hell of a lot of space here. So let me tell you what actual space there is. It's comfortable for me as a five foot nine, to be honest, but going to the beams, which is where I'd obviously put panels in, I'm looking at 192 or 75 inches, 70, 75 and a half inches. The full space from the bulkhead forward to where the rear recess starts is 3 metres exactly. So the actual back doors, 310. There is a limited space above the cab, which I'll show you now. So that's measuring about 19 centimetres, which is about seven and a half inches. And about 150 across, which is about five foot. Sixty-four centimetres deep, which is about twenty-five inches. Let's get a little bit deeper, just the other side of the lip there. About another inch. It does have one 12 volt plug socket. But obviously a bit more than that by the time I finish with it. So my, lay my layout is going to be double bed across the back, uh, shower cubicle next to it, hopefully two passenger seats facing forward here and a small kitchen just after the uh, bed and the two front seats the bulk is coming out and the two front seats will both spin round and that'll be my little lounge so there you have it that's my van and uh, is there anything that I haven't told you about it anything that you'd like to know for your own purposes any other measurements that I haven't taken and given you uh, anything like that that would be useful to you to make a decision on buying a van like this or not. Anyway, hope you found this useful. If you have, give me one of them. Leave me a comment and if you want to see what happens in the future with this van, good idea to subscribe. In the meantime, have a good day and see you again soon.